All right, champ is here. We can start. What is going on, everybody? We are here with, unfortunately, the Spike Week champion. He's he never holds it up right. He's he always, I always hold up upside down. I can hold it however I want. <laughs> Spike true. Week champion. That's the that's the championship we're celebrating today. Spike Week World Order. Took it down, guys. I took it down. It's it's the important one, right? Like, who cares about money when you can have that championship belt? Look how empty my shelf looks now. Like, it is nice, I will say. I mean, I to have the bragging rights belt uh, and best ball mania. It's pretty good. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Well, as we were talking about last evening, the winner of the Spike Week Royal Rumble has 100 percent of the time won best ball mania so that's true i mean that's that's called correlation and it's a pretty <laughs> strong one it's as strong as it gets it's, it's pretty good uh <laughs> pat how i want to congratulate you on starting legendary upside your new site Thank you. that's going to be pretty awesome i've gotten to take a look at it if you haven't gotten to take a look at it you should definitely head over to legendary upside and check out what pat's got going on over there i like the concept i like the building blocks anything you wanted to promote on it before we start drafting today well there's gonna be plenty of best ball content on there uh there is now already i talk about tony pollard's uh still too low adp um there's gonna be rookie stuff uh lots and lots of deep dives on the rookies get you up to speed there i'll be doing um best ball research stuff in the summer uh, best ball rankings going live post draft. Um, and then, you know, we'll be doing plenty of summer content, including my legendary running back series, which is what gave the site its name. Looking for those running backs who can score a ton of points when you're your league. And I'm going to be doing the walkthrough in season. So my game by game preview article. So it's uh, it's a very much a year round type of site. Um, if you're if you're drafting on St. Patrick's Day. You're, you're probably the type of guy who wants year on content. So I got you covered. Is Jamal Williams on the Saints going to be the first legendary upside running back that you write about this year? He will not be. Uh, uh, in order uh, to qualify, you have to be an early round running back. But I don't mind Jamal Williams on the Saint. I mean, you're, you're talking about Kamara being suspended a long time. So he, he has some value in certain builds, I think. I think he actually landed in like the one spot that he has value, which yeah. is the Saints. So like yeah. when I was looking at that last night, I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. But we can talk about all this while we draft. It is St. Patrick's Day. It is a Friday on top of that. Uh, they're closing bars down in Boston at like 7 p.m. tonight because that makes zero sense. If we were younger men, we would not be doing this. We'd be Oh no. Bar. It's a Friday. It is but it's not just a Friday. It's a beautiful Friday. Oh, it's yeah. a, like what the in New York here, you don't even need a coat to walk outside right now. It's 57 degrees on and it's five o'clock on a Friday on St. Patrick's Day. And and I'm I'm in front of my computer drafting a fancy job. Right. Oh, age. We've... It'll get you. We might be drafting. It is not letting me draft over here on my browser. So let's try my other browser. I had this problem before. And uh, now we're going to just uh, absolutely panic mode right at the moment. Have you ever been in panic mode on a stream? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, last night or two nights ago. Peter Overzet put some <laughs> dusty old running back in the queue and then walked away. I forget. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Was it Jamal I was, Williams? I think it was Zeke probably. Was oh, it Zeke? No. Yeah. For some reason, like they think that I'm in Connecticut on one of my browsers. I don't understand what that's all about. Anyways, we will, uh, we're going to have to, I wanted to use the other browser so that we could use the tools. However, that is not an option at the moment, so we will just be doing it over on the other browser. But we're in. Okay. And we are drafting from the 108 because I clearly get no influencer picks. I think I've drafted in the top three like twice this year, and we're seeing a lot of badges. All right. Looks like it might be a bit of an avalanche situation here. It might be. 
which is interesting because I have been draft like in the tail end of the first round. I have been doing some one and two running back builds out of there with Bijan and like yeah, me too, Saquon and Jonathan Taylor and stuff like that. It's yeah. it feels right, which is scary. I don't I don't enjoy it so much. I've also mixed in Brees Hall. Yeah, and in the like, first two rounds. Yeah, in that in that thing, because I'm like, I knocked me a ton of like Bijan Brees or Jonathan Taylor Brees. So I'm mm. just doing it. I'm doing it some because he doesn't ever come back. Right. So that's the stuff that I started doing a lot at the end of last year, where I was trying mm-hmm. to find like like unique combinations of players that people just because you just get so like stricken that these people are at the top of the queue and you should be drafting them. And I think people don't like scroll down enough occasionally in that, especially towards the fir- the end of the first round, early second round. So, yeah, there's usually not that big a difference between a guy who goes like 202 and 211. But the pairings are going to be way less common. And the guy at 211 is like got a 0.5% chance of ever getting back to you. So take him if you want. I, I completely agree. We're looking at possibly having Diggs, Stefan, Stefan Diggs, AJ Brown. Devonte Adams, C.D. Lamb, any of these guys that you particularly – I mean, we got digs at the 108 if we want them. I like A.J. Brown a lot, uh, but mm-hmm. I'd, I'd take digs too. I mean, you – I don't care. I like them both like equally. I want them both on my team. So if you like A.J. Brown, we could do an A.J. Brown build. Let's I'm do A.J. Brown. Totally fine with that. All right, let's start throwing this up here. Uh, yeah, so I was going to – my browser thing, I will fix that so that we can start looking at the Spike Week tools. That is on my end, not on Spike Week's end. For some reason, like I said, I was having problems where – I don't even have a VPN or anything. I don't even live near Connecticut. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, you're in Connecticut. I'm like, I am not. I promise you, of all the states that I would be in, that is the least likely <laughs> outcome. Connecticut's just slowly expanding. Yeah, it's just problem. it's just it's just taking over the entire <laughs> the entire country. Uh, Must be stopped. Had to drive through it last night. Connecticut, one of the worst drives of all time. Worst states to drive through. Doesn't matter if you're on Road 84. I mean, uh, Highway 84 or 95. This is what people came here for, Pat. They wanted to hear about highways. <laughs> then, do you prefer 84 though? I do prefer 84, but I have to take 95. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> this has been highway talk. <laughs> yes, spike traffic times over here yeah, on spike. spike. Oh, yeah. New York better traffic than Boston, mm-hmm. shockingly. So we're seeing. What are you doing with uh with Eckler here? Falling back. I mean, I know you're a big fan of Eckler, as you should be. I am a big fan of Eckler. I don't love drafting Eckler this year neither do I and I actually I thought they were going to sign somebody like I thought Montgomery might go there or something to that effect and they still might bring somebody in obviously but they just keep talking about not wanting to give him the work and yet he still ends up with it every year yeah yeah it was kind of a perfect storm where they were you know they didn't have any downfield options um I think I like Bijan better. Do you like Bijan or do you want to go with the Hertz Brown stack? I'm okay. I haven't done a lot of that. Have you have you done much of that? I'm done. Let's do it. Let's try it out. Let's see what we can do with a Hertz Brown. I mean, I've done it here and there. I haven't done a ton of it. Um one thing I'll say is like, although it's very expensive to take a quarterback, I like the running backs available in round three. Mm-hmm. So if you think of it like, you know, you're getting you're getting such a good value maybe in round three, potentially who on who's there that um, you can think of your quarterback as the round three pick. Yeah, I do like some of the third round running backs as well. I like some of the third round wide receivers here and there. And I personally, I just like having the quarterbacks that have legit 40 point upside on a week to week basis yeah. for specifically week 17. We joke about it, but. For me, it's like Jalen Hurts can go out there and put up 40 any day. The nice thing, too, is that if he does put up 40, it's probably because Brown went nuts. Right. 
And when I'm taking Hurts, I am. I mean, you you can't get all three of them like Hurts, Devonta Smith, AJ Brown. I'm not really double stacking with um, Goddard either. I I kind of like because of the capital I'm putting in the Hurts. Yeah, I'm trying to just do like a single stack with him, and I kind of do the same with Josh Allen. Mahomes is a little different. We're getting roasted for our start. They're saying it's not unique enough. Oh no. Oh, what no. a unique start. That's what we're getting. I mean, you know, you know it's a roast because he, he spelled what? W U T. That's how you know it's a dig. I like Casey asking how many slot receivers will the Patriots end up with this year? Um, it's gonna be seven slots and seven tight ends over <laughs> here in New England. No offense. No, they got rid of the tight end. They got rid of the uh, Johnny, right? They got rid of Johnny, but they signed uh Gusecki. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're doing that here. I was not happy about that Gusecki signing. Uh, because I wanted him to go potentially to the Chargers, I guess, is where I was really hoping for him to fall. But anywhere that would have utilized him. Not that the Patriots won't, it's just the offense here is gonna be bleak is the way i'm feeling about it better than last year but still not great yeah i think it'd be better than last year but but not great uh Poor Gusecki. at least rob rob b knows that it's the darkest state ever for connecticut <laughs> all right so we are coming around into the third round we see that kenneth walker derrick henry dk metcalf chubb jacobs ETN are still on the board. And to your point, there are a lot of great running backs left, like Derrick Henry. Vaporware, please don't draft him right now. We really want Derrick Henry to follow us at the 308. <laughs> We're dying to draft him. Oh, Tony Pollard. Was, so he, what was that pick? 303? Yep. Yeah. That's still good value to me. I think it's still good value. Yeah, I've come around on the Tony Pollard thing, and I've just been pounding Pollard in the third quite a bit yep. lately. Uh, there is, there's two guys here that I really like left. Well, I guess maybe three. There's two here that I'm not drafting. Derrick Henry is one of them. I'll say it. Ooh, Who do you like? Goes. I personally, at this point, I like Ramondre a lot. And right. I, I do like Travis Etienne as well quite a bit. Let's do Ramondre. I can do some Ramondre. I think... He's obviously based on the scheme and stuff that the Patriots run. He's not going to get a hundred percent of the workload, but I mean, who is nowadays for the most part? And with Damian Harris gone, I still think I think Ramondre is going to get a healthy amount of touches this year. Yeah, I like him. Uh, I like Chubb there as well. I do too. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's I think in better shape than he was last year in terms of pass catching stuff because Hunt's gone. Jerry mm -hmm. Johnson's gone. Jerome Ford will will get some of that, but I don't know. Is Jerome Ford good? So right. I think he's got a path to being more like he was a, what in his second year. Remember the year where like basically everyone thought Chubb was going to be like just the guy because he because mm -hmm. he caught enough passes. I think he could get back closer to that. I do you lay any credence to the fact that they're trying to trade him, or do you just think that was like some like ridiculous report yeah so what i wasn't it was it mark sessler who had that i i haven't seen that report i forget who had it but they said that they were open to shopping him and it kind of does okay. make sense in a in like a, a sense with the way that they would convert the offense for deshaun watson but at the same time a who's trading for him b what are they going to give up for him and what are you going to accept for him like i just feel like i don't know i don't know who would want nick chubb for what they're going to ask for him, basically. Yeah. I mean, it's not ideal because I do think he's in a pretty great situation right now if they don't really add much. And I feel like they have enough, like they should be looking to add pass catchers. So, mm -hmm. and he's so good that like, if they bring in, he's one of those guys with like, go ahead and add, you know, Kendry Miller. I don't care. Like Kendry Miller's not beating out Nick Chubb for anything. I don't think, right. I think he's an interesting prospect, but. That doesn't bother. He's like one of the few running backs where I just not bothered. He's got the size. He's got the track record. He's got the talent. He's going to mm. get his carries. So we're back on the clock. We're seeing names like Calvin Ridley. This is when I think the draft starts to get a little ugly. 
we got. Calvin I haven't taken Ridley. much Ridley. Do you do you like him here? I, I mean, I think you're paying the absolute top for him, like in terms of what he's going to do this year. But I don't hate him. I like the offense, obviously. I'm okay with it. Uh, I don't mind I mean, him getting some exposure because he has not been someone I've drafted. But I like I like that player's Tribune piece that got me that got me excited about him. I didn't catch that one. Oh, he's kind of talking about where his head was at mm-hmm. um, leading up to. He was just like battling through injuries, battling through like a legitimately broken foot, mm-hmm. and just kind of explaining how it was that he ended up betting on that game. Um, and then he's just like, I, I forget if it was fourteen hundred yards. He like guaranteed that he'd have like fourteen hundred yards. That's a big guarantee for taking an entire year. Off. I mean, not taking it's the year. Pretty off big. <laughs> it's a pretty big guarantee. I mean, I th- I I like that he's there. He's clearly an upgrade over Marvin Jones. That's not even something that needs to be said. But I still think Christian Kirk is probably the undervalued piece in the offense right now. Where he's going. He's already been there. He has the rapport with Travis Lawrence. I know it's like hand of the dirt shit, but he knows the offense is basically what I'm getting at. And yeah, Ridley might come on late, which is what we want, obviously. But in the beginning, I think you're going to see Kirk getting a lot of the work. And I think Kirk's still going to be a solid pick for the thing. It's just the Jags are so they I knew they were going to rise up the board this year. I didn't think they were going to be where they're at already. For the They're so expensive. Them. Yeah. Yeah, Sam Sherman puts these charts together for us on uh, ADP chasing, which we we did earlier on the Ship Chasing channel today. And the Jags like really jump off the chart as a team that's like very high priced in terms of their stacks, getting their offense relative to their odds of winning the Super Bowl, which you mm-hmm. know, a, kind of a measure of overall team strength. But um, they they do seem like the team that is probably a little overhyped right now. Yeah, I thought they were going to rise up the draft boards. And there's other guys like Garrett Wilson, who I thought was going to start off as like a fourth or fifth rounder this year. And he just immediately started like in the second round almost. And I think it shows how much sharper people are getting with the drafting because like these guys a couple of years ago would rise, but they wouldn't start where they're starting. I blame you guys a little bit for that. I think uh, before drafts had even opened or before I drafted my first draft, you guys were like, you can't lose with Garrett Wilson. How do you lose? You can't. You got to draft him no matter where he goes. Shut up. I'm not in the country. I was all in on Garrett Wilson. I thought it was going to be like a little slight edge I could get on people, but clearly. You, uh, you, you made sure it wasn't. <laughs> clearly. Speaking of guys that you're uh, in, going to be touting up boards, Jameson Williams, I know you guys like him. Uh, mm. I like Tyler Lockett a lot, who is very boring, but. Uh, you know, I like both. I'll, I'll do Lockett because I don't have any Tyler Lockett. Okay. Um, I'm not a big Tyler Lockett guy. I think he's 31 this year. I just, I feel that regression coming with him. And I felt like the Seahawks started to slow down a bit last year as well. They started with that like hot start and then they started to slow. And Yeah, that's true. That is true. And I just, I don't know. DK is a guy that I'm still in on, of course, because he's DK Metcalf and he is... Uh, he would probably come beat me up if I wasn't in on him. I've been doing a lot of like DeAndre Swift around here. I know that mm-hmm. they just signed David Montgomery up there, but fifth round DeAndre Swift is great. If he was second round DeAndre Swift again, I'd have zero percent, just like yeah. I did last year for the most part. Hayden Winks was on uh, ADP Jason today, and he was really hammering the money that David Montgomery got. Mm-hmm. It's concerning. Uh, three years, $18 million, $4.5 million signing bonus, $11 million guaranteed. You don't love it. And then DeAndre Swift is a free agent after the year. Uh, they've been pretty vocal about the things he doesn't do well. So I'm I'm worried about Swift, particularly like down the stretch, because I could just see them being like, you know what? David doesn't mess anything up. And mm-hmm. so we're just going to have him out there all the time. Yeah, I do. I do understand that. I'm not going to be 20% on as on Swift going through the air, but he is a guy that I'm probably going to be slightly overweight on. We are. I think you want to be you want to be in some because there is a, there's obviously it's the upside. explosion. It's the explosion, and he's a fifth rounder, and you can get explosion 
plays in week 17 from him or something like that. Week 15, week 16, you're going to get like three or four of those games from him most likely. For sure. And that's when I want to be in on him. Anyone standing out to you? At this point, I, I would be okay with Goddard. I mean, if we're going to think about pits, mm -hmm. why wouldn't we double stack it? That, I mean, it's fair. And we're really looking for him to do stuff like have those hurts to have those explosion games with just Goddard and just AJ Brown so that we can sneak some of those through and other people don't have them sort of like they did with like T Higgins and Jamar Chase two years ago where yeah. they both were just going off. So like, if you didn't have both, you were kind of screwed. Plus like we took hurts in the second round Brown in the mm -hmm. first round. We need the Eagles to be awesome again. And if the Eagles are awesome again, then Goddard's going to be scoring points. Uh, we'll get back to the Eagles in one second, but we do have a question about any worry about J Rob to the Pats, the NFL team, not as in Pecorin. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not worried about Robinson going to the Patriots. He couldn't stay on the team last year. I think it's good. I think it's good because Pierre strong is more concerning to me than James Robinson. You yeah. Know? If I like, Ramondre Stevenson is not the fastest guy in the world. So, like, what if Pierre Strong gets out there and is, you know, ripping off longer runs and has has made a big improvement? And they're like, oh, I didn't think he'd be this good. I don't want – if he's that good, I don't want anyone to know. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't want him – you know, if I have Ramondre Stevenson, I want James Robinson coming in, you know, not missing blocks, not, not missing pass protection assignments, just kind of chugging along, and Ramondre coming back in as soon as possible. So I, I think it's almost protection in a way. I completely agree with that, to be honest. Um, going back to the Eagles, one thing that I think is going to happen with them this year that I brought up on our last stream that we did is I think they're going to be slightly worse on defense, and I don't think they're going to roll teams kind of like they were doing all of last year. Tougher schedule. Uh, again, they, they were just winning games in the first half and then just sitting on leads the entire season. So I think the offense is going to have to actually play third and fourth quarters a bit more this year. And that's going to supply us with some more fantasy. I'm not saying they're going to get into 45, 40 point shootouts every week, but I just like that, the fact that they have to play more. Yeah, that sounds like, you know, like normally when you hear that, it'd be like, okay, but like they didn't like, you know, only play three quarters. That's like, but they did. Yeah. <laughs> they like pulled their starters against the Steelers. Like, I think right at the very beginning of the fourth quarter, or maybe even at the end of the third, there was like quarters we missed, whole mm -hmm. quarters we missed. Yeah. And if they were out there, they were like turning around and handing it off to like Boston Scott for right every three downs. And you're just like, well, I'm at, he's got 30 points, but he could have got 50 if this team could have pushed them. Plus, you know, Hertz didn't play. Uh, you, you know, they had the, the the injury issue at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, in the same way that Josh Jacobs would probably be going around higher if he just if you just like scrambled when he scored his points and he did what he did during the regular season during the playoffs, he'd probably be like the one eleven or something. Yeah, uh, I think there's like that thing where like obviously Hertz is going very high, and AJ mm -hmm. Brown's going very high, but like if you got that AJ Brown Steelers game in the fantasy playoffs, they'd be I think they'd be going even higher, uh, and they have that they have that week winning ceiling for sure. They they really do. And it's a real thing. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the stacks that I'm going to want in week 17, week 16, week 15 coming up this year, for sure. Uh, we have a question about Dalvin Cook that we will answer after we get our next draft pick in. I'm going to just highlight running backs and wideouts real quick. I like Dobbins here. I'm hmm. not sure where you're looking. Uh, this board's uh, kind of gross. You scroll up a bit. Uh, yeah, I think Dobbins or Acres would be the two guys if we're going to go running mm -hmm. back. And then I like, uh, I like Addison. Okay, more of an eighth round pick ideally, but but we, I will say we only have, what we have three receivers. Yeah, I almost rather go Addison and then not get boxed see, out receiver. See who gets dropped to us over here. Yeah, because like the, the receivers are really drying up. All right, so we'll grab Addison. Got that in there real quick. Uh, real quick, the question that is asked is, does Dalvin stay or get traded or cut? I don't know, man. Like, I don't think – I would say, like, I 
I would think it's probably slightly more likely he's not there than is there. What do you think? Mm. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you got to run that offense back a little bit. You already got rid of Thielen, so you're saying KJ Osborne's the out the other guy now. I don't know. Do you want to completely take that avenue away, the Dalvin Cook stuff? I mean, he was still fine last year. So this came up on the pod we just did where apparently what Dalvin may have done is he got surgery on mm-hmm. his shoulder, which I'm sure was needed and you know the timing was was when it needed to happen. But the timing was such that he can't be cut ahead of a roster bonus. I think it's two million dollars that's mm-hmm. now locked in. This is what this is what I'm I'm this is all secondhand, but this is what they were saying on the pod. So that would be kind of interesting because it maybe hints at like had he not gotten surgery, maybe he already would be out looking for another job. Because mm. he can't he wouldn't pass a physical right now. Oh, that's an interesting that's that's uh I need to do that at work. I need to go in and be like, hey, I have to have surgery. You have to pay me two million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I need the full crane here. <laughs> Your boss is like, I'm we're gonna need to meet on Monday. And you go, okay, great. Uh, just get a, let me schedule a quick surgery here. <laughs> Sorry, I'll be out for the next uh two months. <laughs> yeah. Um all right, so we're looking at running back. Some of the guys we liked are gone. Algier, James Cook's there. I James like James Cook and too. Algier. I think both are good. Is there a way that you lean on this one? Um, let's go James Cook. Get the guy in the better offense. Better offense. Feels like a little more fun. And it works because we get the guy's brother that we were just talking about, right? Were you aware of the stat? This is like the most important stat in all of pro sports right now that Dalvin Cook's name is Dalvin James Cook and James Cook's name is James Dalvin Cook. What? Did you know this? I didn't know that. It is the most bonkers thing I've ever heard in my life that that's what their parents <laughs> did. What if me? they had a third son? <laughs> they would have been they would have been so screwed. It would have had to be <laughs> James James Dalvin Dalvin Cook. It would have had to been like Dames Jalvin. That's what <laughs> Dames Jalvin Cook. Or day or Dalvin James James Dalvin Cook. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to has, I don't know. Is there an anagram of maybe no middle name, but but just mix together James and Dalvin, come up with one name. <laughs> and he'd be the brother that's not in the NFL too. Like that would be a rough existence oh, for the yeah. for the third brother. Who's the third Peyton or third Manning? Sorry. Uh, oh my God. Someone in the chat will know it off the head. Cooper. Cooper. Yeah. The but Cooper he... Manning, but, but just leftover letters from James and Dalvin <laughs> would be rough. That'd be a tough scene. Mike Rob in the chat has it. It's JD DJ cook. Hmm. DJ JD cook would be the better. Yeah. DJ you gotta... JD cook. Yeah. Yeah. You got to go with the older brother too. So it has to be DJ JD cook. I just, I heard that and like my mind melted. I was like, I've never heard of such yeah, a thing. Is that right? <laughs> it's right. That's crazy. You're going to look it up and you're going to be like. I believe, here's the thing. I believe you. I just need to see it. <laughs> oh, I agree. I had to look it up after I heard it too, to be completely fair. Because I'm like, that can't be a thing. That's amazing. That's amazing. So when you start having kids, Karen. Yeah. <laughs> that's so great if you want them to be in the nfl you have James to Dalvin cook oh god i love it <laughs> that's so it's like kind of just a badass move you're like yep yeah Our names also <laughs> this there are two names don't go by your middle that... name because it won't work <laughs> there, there are two names in the entire world that we like and we're going to use them both times <laughs> <laughs> i love it all right, we are going to be coming back on the clock in a second. Oh my God, I'm so sad that Juju signed with the New England Patriots. Not where that I is wanted pretty to rough, go. Huh? That is uh, not ideal. So receivers for... are just like gone now, huh? I mean, we have like Mooney nobody. on board. I like Mooney quite a bit, even with the DJ Moore signing, especially right. as like a fifth wideout. I mean, Elijah Moore, I'm in on too. Mm. 
I don't like the Packers that much. <laughs> it's not a bit. I think he's going to get traded. I wouldn't. I mean, but trade it to where? Did I miss it? Did I? The deal oh, you think, gone down yet. oh, you think right. he's going to be in the, the Packers? I think he's going to be in the deal for the Rodgers. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Then I got nervous that it happened and I was outdated with my jokes. <laughs> no, no. I I thought you were making the Jets are the Packers joke. Since no, they I, since they're signing Randall Cobb and Alan Lazard and Aaron Rodgers and they're trying to get Mercedes Lewis over there and I know, just don't see how they do all that and then like okay now the Jets are like well who comes to mind as potential trade compensation now that we've just signed Randall Cobb and Alan Lazard <laughs> it's sort of an obvious it's kind of like I don't know it makes uh, sense to me it does make sense and I hate that you're saying it. Sad, sad times because I was looking forward to being able to play Elijah Moore, and he's just going to be one of those what could have been guys going forward. Yep. Sad times. So right now, our team, let's run through it real quick. Jalen Hurts, Ramondre Stevenson, James Cook, actually James Dalvin Cook, A.J. Brown, Calvin Ridley, Tyler Lockett, Jordan Addison, Darnell Mooney, and Dallas Goddard. So we've got the onesie positions early, which does – tend to hurt the RB and wide receiver, but I'm not, I haven't lost faith in our team at the moment. I think we're still putting together a decent roster. I agree. Are you not in on Mooney? It sounded like you were a little reluctant there. I'm a little reluctant on Mooney. Um, I just, it does not be that many pass attempts there. And mm. now we're looking at, you know, DJ Moore being able to earn targets. I think significantly better than Mooney. That I agree with. I just think when we're starting to talk about our fifth, sixth, seventh wide receiver, I just need Mooney to score for me like six or seven times throughout the season, probably. And he has the potential to just like house some in this some big room. Players. I kind of like, I'm glad we did it because mm -hmm. I really don't like the double digit round receivers right now. Like, yeah. basically, I think receivers like almost done now. <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad we. We got our guy. I, I don't mind Jamal Williams here, to be honest. Oh, wow. Where are you at? I haven't been I, taking him much, but I'm like, if we're, we got James Cook as RB2, get some early season points. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm still trying to process the New Orleans situation with him because I, I, as soon as he signed, I was like, wow, I think that's the one team that he could go to that I would draft Jamal Williams for. Right. So I guess we can do it. We'll see how it works. We out don't have to. I mean, if you've got no, another no, guy. I don't, I don't. That's the thing. I'm not I'm not in love with many people that are left on the board around this range. They just it gets a little gross. Sometimes I just start doing some scrolling to see if I can get some more like upside guys. Speaking of the Saints, where are you at with Michael Thomas this year? What are you thinking? I, I mean, I've been like just so confounded by him over the last few years like he this the injury stuff like mm. is he gonna be ever healthy because he kind of he's kind of an awesome value if he's healthy well that's the thing is he's finally like a decent value and we can say everything we want to say about Derek Carr but I think it improves the situation on that team tremendously for the wide receivers based on what they were dealing with last year with like Andy Dalton who is still in the league somehow. Nobody knows how. <laughs> no one's sure. <laughs> we're, we're all on a we're all unsure of how and Carolina made a big post today. They're so excited about signing Andy Dalton. I think it was like QB1. It's like it's Andy Dalton. <laughs> also, you just traded for the first pick. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you we know we're not dumb, but like still, it's Andy freaking Dalton, and they're probably gonna do something dumb. I mean, I want to get back to the Saints, but the, the Panthers will probably start Andy Dalton for like three games before they, you know, let their their number one overall pick play because that's what stupid teams do. Yeah. But I, I do like I do like taking some shots on Michael Thomas. I don't want to get crazy with it. But like you said, if he does anything I, like I he forgot about to, Rashad Penny, we should have scrolled down further. I'm really bummed we didn't take Rashad Penny instead of Jamal Williams. I had seen yeah. him after we took Jamal, and I was trying not to highlight the name uh, so that it came back to us. It's such a better pick. 
It's like the best. It's the best version of the pick we just made. Mm. I'm gutted. It's okay. We have. So you just got to say to yourself for this team, Jalen Hurts is getting all of the rushing touchdowns and Rashad Penny's doing nothing. Got, he's also going to be out by week seven. Oh, God. Oh. He, he's going to be out by week seven is the other. We thing. said, oh, you got to scroll down more. You got to <laughs> scrolling down enough. And then we're like, oh, wait, stop the key. Let's go. Yeah. God. Hey. Maybe some beverages were had last night and we weren't as sharp <laughs> as we normally are. Yeah, we should we should say we hung out last night. We did hang out last night. Yeah, that's that's not very common. You just get on a stream, it's like ah, yeah. We hung well, out. We went and had uh, we went and we took over Manhattan last night. It was we a did. lot of fun. We got All some right. uh, we got some ice cream. We got some drinks. Yes, nice night. It was great. Um, we are on the clock though, and we're seeing a bunch of garbage. Well, we could go Kenny Gainwell since Penny's going to have a disastrous year. Yeah, he's going to be hurt by week seven. <laughs> you blew it, man. You got to take Jamal Williams. You can't take Rashad Penny. I, I don't hate Gainwell still. I know I like the, the Penny signing for them. But again, I mean, Penny's history is that he can't stay on the field. Right? Like, And I, I'm not a big injury guy and with most people. But certain guys just... You know, Kadarius Tony, I love the value on him right now. Am I worried about him staying on the field? Absolutely. The other guy is like Rashad Penny. Yeah. So on this team. On this team, <laughs> you can't draft Rashad Penny. He's going to get hurt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> on every other team, I'm drafting Rashad Penny. Um, Paul asking if we're worried about Penny. I'm not really. I mean, he's going from teams are getting him, what, in the 16th, 17th, 18th, something like that. Mm -hmm. And now you're getting him in the 10th. Your 10th round pick is valuable, but it's not like sort of like in an auction draft, right? Like, what would a 10th round pick be like? Six dollars, seven dollars. And it's like, oh, someone else got him for two. I can't draft him. I don't think you'd be feeling that way. Mm. You know, it's not like if he was a second round pick and you're like, I'm going to spend like $40, $45 on him, then I, then I think you'd be thinking that way a little bit more. Um, we are going to be coming back up on the clock in a second here. I think we're kind of wide open to do whatever we want at this point in round 12. I mean, we obviously do want more wide receivers, running backs. We put a lot of capital into our quarterback, a decent amount into our tight end position. But I think there is a possibility to take a second quarterback and be done or just kick the can completely with quarterback i am fine with as well yeah i i i think we have two options yeah I, it's gino gino yeah gino or thinking. what was your other thought well car for just kind of overall betting on the offense in new orleans mm. um i think the gino tyler lockett stack gino is, makes more sense yeah car is more cool. of a backup and What's beautiful is, uh, to me, we're done with QB unless something drastically drops into round 19 or 20, right? Yeah, I like, love that. It's a great QB room. Yeah, there's there's nothing else we need here. Um, let's run through the team real quick. We have Jalen Hurts, Geno Smith, Ramondre Stevenson, James Dalvin Cook, Jamal Williams, Kenneth Gainwell, A.J. Brown, Calvin Ridley, Tyler Lockett, Jordan Addison, Darnell Mooney, and Dallas Goddard. So that Eagles double stack, we get the Geno stack with uh, Tyler Lockett. I'm just going to go ahead and say that we have the Week 17 correlation between Hertz, Jamal Williams, Kenneth Gainwell, as they played in Week 17 last week. So all we can do is assume that they are going to play each other again in Week 17. We got that this Bears season. bring back. We got the, Bear the Bears <laughs> tried to run. The Eagles just put up all the points. Darnell Mooney in garbage time, Week 17. We got yeah. there. Yeah, we got all the bring backs. We're good. Here. It was the uh, Monday Night Football game too, Rob. So we are absolutely <laughs> going nuts right now, for sure. Um, also, let's talk a little bit about last night and things that blew my mind. The fact that who knew that there was ice cream that tasted like milk? Yeah, I mean, what a what a concept, right? <laughs> I mean, this is the genius that only New York can bring you ice cream that tastes <laughs> like milk, and then we'll put cereal in it because oh, uh, imagine that. Yeah, I, actually, it's pretty good, though. <laughs> I think I, I blew it. I'm I'm upset that I went with the board pick and went with the thing that 
me and you both got. I wish I went with the actual milk ice cream and did like Cocoa Pebbles in it. Well, that, that would have been good. That, that was good. the play, right? Like, and I and I blew it. I got I got distracted by the picture. Well, so what we ordered instead, Rob and I. Now, to be clear, we <laughs> we each ordered our own. <laughs> we did not share this, but uh, we each got a brown butter ice cream, which I, uh, to be honest, thought was absolutely delicious. And brown yeah. butter is like one of those things that has never missed in its history. I don't think there's ever been a brown butter thing that's not been good. So I, I was fine with it. But yeah, I mean, if you're going to a place called milk, if you make sense probably to get the milk yeah it i did like it as well the thing that you know the brown butter one but as i was eating i'm like oh shit it's cereal toppings it literally tasted like milk i think i was skeptical that it was going to taste like milk um that just didn't seem like a real thing <laughs> so <laughs> anyways we are coming back up on the clock Let's see what we got for wideouts here Hmm. Anything jumping out at you? Not okay. really. What about tight end? Anything left? Taysom Hill. <laughs> do you want to do Taysom? Yeah, we we just got all the touchdowns in New Orleans. We have Jamal and Taysom. You can't. And if a touchdown is scored, it's on our team. I'll take it. All right, let's do it. Let's do Taysom Hill. And there's a conversation I want to have about a player on this list, but we'll wait and see what happens before we start talking about them. To wrap up ice cream chat, there is ice cream that literally tastes like milk, and it's not as terrible as it sounds. Just get the right toppings. We have a question in the chat from Mike Robb. Is Russell Wilson with Sean Payton going too low? Like Russ isn't a horrible quarterback, maybe a weird dude, but he has some skill left, and if last year was a blip, wouldn't Russ be a steal? It's a lot of ifs, though. Like I'm not, I don't disagree with it. But we are playing the woulda, shoulda, Kenny, you know, redemption bounce back because of a head coach game. What I don't love about it is that it doesn't seem like Peyton took the job because of Russ. Mm -hmm. It almost seems like he took the job in spite of Russ. It also seems like, well, it doesn't seem like there's strong buzz that they're talking about, you know, maybe trading a receiver. So is that what you do when you're like, Russ is our guy? We got to, I don't know. It seems like. It could. It's certainly possible, but it's it's uh, he's not like the cheapest quarterback ever right now. So, right. Uh, some of that some of that bounce back's priced in to a degree. Yeah, the receiver thing does scare me as well because it's not even like they're like we just want to trade one. They're like pick which one you want and give us some compensation yeah, for it. We don't even <laughs> care which one because we're just so uninterested <laughs> in uh this quarterback succeeding this year it does feel they feel a little ambivalent on russ having that bounce back here all right we got about 20 seconds here is anyone jumping out at you in this queue mm -hmm. at all mm -hmm. what about i like spears okay i like roshan johnson a decent amount uh he might come back though mm -hmm. uh We'll go with Spears. I like Spears. A little pass catcher, a little, you know, maybe a Michael Carter type of outcome, rookie year, that type of thing. I didn't want to push Tyquan Thornton on you because from what I hear, you have to draft him every Wednesday night. So I don't think we've drafted that much of him, actually. I would have been no. okay with him. No. I know. Well, you're into booty? Are you in a booty? I'm just into some rookies here at this point based on who's going around him. Like, I'm not touching Renfro. I'm not touching Claypool. Samuels, whatever, Thielen, whatever, Taekwon, I like. So it's like I like Taekwon. I'll take the upside of booty over I think Renfro's dead completely. Yeah, I like Claypool, fun. but not on a team that I already have Mooney. So yeah, that makes sense. I I do like Clay Claypool though in the spot. He probably when I don't have DJ Moore or <laughs> you know. Hacker asking the, the pertinent question here. It's it's a good point. Who is not into booty? Yeah. Uh, very valid. So that's kind of like the... Uh, that booty's dropping. Haven't you heard? <laughs> I heard it's rocking everywhere. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> someone, <laughs> someone needs a clip crane asking if you're into booty. <laughs> I did ask it like, are you into booty? Yeah. <laughs> I I have these flyers that I got in Las Vegas while walking down the street for you. <laughs> the funny thing is that I'm not actually into this particular booty. Yeah, I think uh, I think he might be a day three guy after the combine. And I don't love that. I mean, not ideal, but like nothing in this range as we scroll is real ideal. All right, I have something that I that I would. Is like. Marvin Mims available? That's who I was just about to. Oh to star as the time was clicking down on try again chump who doesn't have a badge maybe he's not watching the stream maybe he doesn't know about marvin mims yet no he's never heard of him beautiful yeah i'm gonna go mims here Mim. if you're cool with that i've had if we did have the spike week tools you would see that he is on a decent number of my roster i like him a lot zach kruger was touting him before the combine which i think it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice because that basically he wasn't on my radar at all. I think it was on wasn't really on a lot of people's radar until they had that really, really impressive combine. Um, I have a I have a hot take hacker. I've been to Miami a few times. It's just okay. Miami's just okay. Okay. That's my hot take for Miami. <laughs> would I go back? Yes. I would go back. Yeah, sure. I'd, um, I'd go back, I guess. I'm I'm not like man. I need to go back to Miami, Florida, ever. And, <laughs> and uh, that's me. All right, Rob, on the record, not that into booty. So hacker thinks that I'm as smart as him when it comes to computer stuff, and I did not think of this part of that I could just <laughs> open up Firefox after entering the draft. You know, that's so it, true that, you know, that's not, I mean, that didn't occur to me either you know i was panicking that they thought i was in connecticut because i clearly am not in connecticut i am in my living room in massachusetts um so you know it is what it is we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna work through it we'll figure it out for next time you'll be able to see how much marvin mims i drafted that's fine we'll get there the tools are great it's not the tools fault it's my fault is what we'll go with. Uh, we are at a two five six two build in the sixteenth round. We're about to be on the clock, and there isn't the color yellow anywhere to be found on the draft board at the no, moment. There's not. As we scroll, we do see some names. I like Roshan. Go with Roshan Johnson here. Maybe find yeah. some yellow on the turn. Davis Maddock keeps talking about how, what a good pass protector he is, and he was a former quarterback. And, like, it's not the most exciting story to tell yourself, but, like, it's a story that usually comes true. Team trusts running back who can play on third down. He has enough size and not, like, a scat back type either. So I think, you know, he's never he's never going to pop in anything because he played behind B. John Robinson, but – um could be kind of like the Miles Sanders to uh, B. John Robinson, Saquon Barkley type of thing. Mm. Well, you also saw it last year in Tampa where rookie Rashad White was on the field because he could handle third down. Exactly. And if he couldn't, of all teams, that would be the one team that he would just sat all season, right? Because they're not going to, Brady is not going to let that dude on the field exactly. if, he, if he can't pass protect. So, yeah, it's, it's an underrated thought in our community because of what we're looking for but if they can do that that just means they're on the field more like point blank yeah and at this point if you get a running back who's on the field a lot it's a big win yeah especially with the way the nfl is going now i mean there just aren't workhorses anymore this isn't 2003 2002 when ladanian tomlinson and everyone else was just going nuts because they were getting 95 percent of the work different game yep and i don't know what round is it so small i can't tell oh sorry we're in we round 17 at this point uh, yeah so 16th round pick we just took i mean yeah that's an absolute smash if he if he has any kind of consistent role yeah so i'm i'm in for it and he's our sixth running back as well so okay we're currently at 2662 
I think we're just kind of flexible to do whatever we want. We do need to fire some wideouts, though. We need some more wideouts, and there's probably not many left. What's the what's the situation? Oh, we're looking at, you know, the all-stars here of Van Jefferson, Robert Woods, Allen Robinson, Rasheed Rice, Corey Davis, Cedric Tillman, Richie James. So, Corey Davis, odds that he stays on the Jets? So I don't mind him if he's there. What do you – I mean, I was all the way out on Allen Robinson to start the year. And now that he's going 17th, 18th round, like – well, sorry, 18th, 19th round. I think I'm still out. I, I don't know. I just – I might grab him here and there. I don't know. We don't even know where he's going to play, though. Well, he's playing with the Rams. I can't get rid of him. I think they'd have to – they literally can't cut him. Like, I they – they were looking to trade them, but maybe. Well, of course they're looking to trade them, but <laughs> they're stuck. Is there any other? Oh, God, I guess we just have to draft someone. Cedric Tillman, I kind of like, is like a upside swing of maybe he gets day two capital. Mm-hmm. There's things to like about his profile. It's a very spotty profile, but. Yeah, it's getting gross. It's getting real gross in the uh, wide receiver streets over here. There's a chance Tillman is talented and he has size. So. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Our wide receivers right now, we'll just go through them as AJ Brown, Calvin Ridley, Tyler Lockett, Jordan Addison, Darnell Movie, Darnell Mooney, Marvin Mims, Cedric Tillman. I think a nice little mix in there of established with some rookies and some like boom bust guys like Darnell Mooney. This is why the Mooney pick really was important though, because um mm. we had five through what ten, which mm. is like where well, you're doing pretty good at five through ten. Um, but then there just weren't any receivers left. So, like, yeah, every receiver we take is, like, a $1 total scratch-off ticket at this point, but we don't necessarily need those guys to advance. Like, we could advance to the playoffs with just our top five wide receivers because we took – we spent legit draft capital on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm relatively happy. I feel like we're a receiver short almost. But yeah, we probably are one. Ideally, we're, we would have. I mean, maybe Mims comes through, but we're definitely a little thin at receiver. I still think that this is the greatest team that has ever been drafted on St. Patrick's Day, specifically <laughs> in the St. year Patrick's 2023. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, on or after 5 p.m., something like that. Yeah. So, I mean, this is still going to win Best Ball Mania. I mean, not Best Ball Mania. Sorry, this could win Best Ball Mania. It's gonna, it's gonna win the big board though, for sure. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do something unprecedented. You're gonna come back on in three months, and we are going to draft this same exact team at Best Ball, Best Ball Mania. Yeah, okay. We're, we're gonna come I'm in. Down. We're gonna we're gonna get AJ Brown, the Jalen Hurts stack. Um, That's Gino a clean stuff. sweat for us. <laughs> We just, it's like, well, you know, so, oh, sweet. We won Best Ball Mania 4 and the big board. That was nice yeah. and easy. All we do is draft the same team on purpose. It's, it's actually not that hard, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, if we're looking for receivers and, uh, you know, we need guys who are going to have a role and maybe a quarterback upgrade. Yeah. Just seems kind of, yeah, seems kind of nice. Huh? <laughs> Let's we'll get a little LaVisca going. We'll get a little LaVisca going. There we go. We did it. We did that. And if we do win both of the tournaments, the big board and best ball mania, then we can do the show we were talking about last night. This well, you're so we you have a couple outs to that show because you're also <laughs> gonna come down uh, the World Series of Poker. Right. Uh so you know, we don't even have to do that. But if you also want to win <laughs> both big tournaments this year, we I'm down. I'm down. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's boring at this point for you, but <laughs> oh, it's not actually, Rob. <laughs> I would love to win these tournaments, <laughs> um, but I hope we do so that we can. We have to keep that show a secret, unfortunately. But when we win the tournament, we will make that show, and uh, well, that's a promise. <laughs> it's gonna go great. Let's just say that nobody's going to hate us ever. <laughs> it's definitely not the type of show that one might call a double heel turn. No one looks so good on 
<laughs> oh, it's going to be great. I, I, I want to win specifically for that. <laughs> Just to do that show. Yeah. So I think there are no receivers left uh, in this draft. What about Greg Dortch? He's a wide receiver sometimes. Sometimes he is. He may not have a job, though. <laughs> um, which is crazy like you would think like he'd at least get signed somewhere after last year well is he still on the cardinals i was just thinking he's playing behind uh i thought he was a free uh, agent oh man that's even worse right oh he's on a one-year deal it looks like oh is he okay yeah um what is what's available at running back and tight end I, we have we could add there if we want to so we're looking at so we're looking at Jarek McKinnon. So like I I'm not big on McKinnon this year, but me and Bymfor took him in the 20th round. I think 19th 20th round McKinnon isn't the worst. That's okay. Yeah. Jerome Man. Ford's nice. Jerome Ford's potentially was, a direct handcuff. That's where I was going to go next was Jerome Ford. Um tight end is a little rough. Jerome Ford, I'm going to call it now. Jerome Ford 2023 is Darrington Evans. That's what we're gonna get. We're gonna get guys. He's 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 a pass catcher. He's free. And then by by the time Bime Four is done, we're he, we're drafting 13th round, 13th round <laughs> Ford. That's that's fair. That's probably what's gonna happen. Do it, do it, make it happen. Get him pushed up the board. I mean, I couldn't get Dearness Johnson pushed up the board last year, and I had 40. I tried. I did my best. Yeah, I had forty yeah. percent Dearness Johnson on my team, which hurt my soul. That should have worked, right? There was a million outs. It was too many outs for that. Was, that was the problem. Actually, was there were too many outs. There were too many outs, and that's why it failed. Like, yeah. so many things could happen. It could have been one injury. It could have been one trade. It could have been Dearness getting traded, Hunt getting traded. Anything could have happened for that to work out, and it just none of the things. No. Nope. Blew my mind. Uh, so right now we're sitting on a two seven eight two build. I might I, I would advocate maybe for a tight end. Uh, I like Jelani Woods. Okay, he's going to get a quarterback upgrade. I like the rookies. Are there are any you, other rookies left? Are you convinced that he's going to get a quarterback upgrade? I mean, I'm pretty sure they can just sit there and take somebody, right? <laughs> um, it is the Colts. It is Jim Irsay as the owner. Weird shit could happen over there. Weird shit could happen. I like Sam Laporta a lot. I like Luke Musgrave as well. When we have Goddard and Taysom Hill, is there a guy that you would prefer out of all of them? Well, the chat's saying Laporta, so uh, Laporte Laporta is the guy I take a lot of. I don't understand why he's free. He's a really good prospect. He had a good combine. I think one thing we do with tight ends is that we're like. Zach Koontz was the most athletic tight end ever. Oh, my God. Not that he's getting drafted that high, but we did this with last year with Jelani Woods. We we're like, oh, my God, his RAS score is amazing. Sam mm. Laporta's RAS score is like 9.5 plus, he was, which is elite. He's just not, like, perfect. But he was also very productive as a receiver. So it's like, hey, like, you know, if the guy's in, like, the 95th percentile, that's cool, too. So... I don't know. I don't know why there's not a little bit more buzz about him because I think he, he's very much in the mix to be a day two guy now. Sounds like he'll be drafted by the New England Patriots to be their fifth tight end. <laughs> Thus, Come on, Bengals. Com don't let us down. <laughs> That's completing the trilogy of them just making ridiculous tight end sightings. Um, cool. Our team is complete. We are looking at Jalen Hurts and Geno Smith for quarterback. Ramonde, Ramonde, Ramondre, Stevenson, James, Dalvin Cook, Jamal Williams, Kenneth Gainwell, Ty J. Spears, Roshan Johnson, Jerome Ford at running back. Actually, really like our running back room a lot. Let's go back to this team. And wide receiver, A.J. Brown, Calvin Ridley, Tyler Lockett, Jordan Addison, Darnell Mooney, Marvin Mim, Cedric Tillman, LaVisca Chenault. And tight end Dallas Garrett, Taysom Hill, Sam Laporta. Um, I kind of really do like this team. I do feel slightly thin at wide out, For but sure. but not detrimentally thin, right? Like I don't think this team 
is is going to get massacred because of it. Yeah, like if we had instead of Addison, if we had, I don't know, Traylon Burks, I'd feel better. That like just a just a guy who's like gonna kind of hit the ground running a little bit quicker. Maybe Burks isn't the best example, but he's someone I like in that general range. Rashad yeah. Bateman, assuming assuming uh, Lamar's there, something like that. Like it's just it, Addison is our fourth receiver is an ideal, but I actually really. I really feel great about the Mooney pick. I feel like he kind of he kind of ties the draft together for us. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy I've been doing that a lot with with teams specifically like this, um, where I feel like Brandon I need that Brooks type of guy. That guy for me for a long time, but he was gone when when Mooney when we took Mooney. Mm. Cook staying in Houston. Where are we at with him? Uh, I think he's gone. I think he's I think he's elsewhere. I mean, he was pretty clear he didn't want to be there. But the mm-hmm. thing I like about taking him is that if he does stay in Houston, he's getting a big time scheme upgrade, the yep. Shanahan style offense coming in, probably Bryce Young there. I think that could be really good. Uh, obviously, a massive quarterback upgrade from Davis Mills. So I don't. I think it's kind of like win win. Like there are some bad outcomes where he gets traded to a terrible team, and you know. But is he gonna? Is he gonna allow that? Like he's clearly disgruntled about having had to play for the Texans the last two years. So I would imagine if teams trading for him, it's maybe not like a Super Bowl contender, but someone in the mix for the playoffs at least. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I am not going to ruin your Friday night by talking about Brandon Cooks for more than a minute and a half. I'm going to let you get out of here. Go enjoy your St. Patrick's Day. Let everyone in the chat enjoy their St. Patrick's Day. Remember to check out Legendary Upside. Pat Corain, he's probably going to be talking about Jamal Williams at some point. Maybe that should be the guy he's talking about for his first legendary upside piece. Maybe that would. We drafted him, after all, for Christ's sake. We did draft him. (laughs) You can't can't deny that. Yeah, we did do that. That was a thing. Um, Anything else you want to say before we get out of here? No, I appreciate it, man. It's fun hanging out. Fun getting some milk ice cream with you. (laughs) Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. We will see you, I don't know, probably on Monday. And I'm going to end the show now. Bye. Peace.